As some people may be aware, I was really excited for Borderlands 3, and so I decided that I was so excited for Borderlands 3 that I would take everybody, level by level, through my playthrough as Moe's. And because I am really bad at naming things, this is Moe's Money, Moe's Problems. Level 1. But choices had to be made before we even started. I set the brightness to 100 because I don't care if I might possibly be able to see that little V on the left. It's not good enough. I want to know I can clearly see it. That's very important. Also, the black level I set all the way up. I have no idea if it really affected anything, but whatever. It, it's fine. And now I could finally play a new game. I chose normal because I am brave today, and then got very lost when I saw co-opetition mode. Luckily, I'm playing by myself because I abhor having other people around when I do basically anything. So cooperation mode was fine. Didn't really feel like it was going to affect me much at all. Marcus narrated an all too familiar cutscene where we learn that yes, there are indeed vaults and we are going to go hunting for them. And that there are going to be some vault hunters and the bad guys are not Handsome Jack. Which is pretty much all I needed to know. Are you Handsome Jack or are you not Handsome Jack? That's basically the only thing that matters here. Then you get the traditional Mad Max style opening and meet in very dramatic fashion our four new vault hunters. You have Flack, who's a robot with his own petting zoo, which is actually pretty sweet. Amara, which answers the question, what would have happened if Lilith and Brick got together and had a baby? And Zane, who answers the question, how Irish could a character conceivably be? But I am going to play as Moe's, the gunner, who has basically her own mobile suit, Gundam. I've been a big fan of having giant mechs ever since I watched Power Rangers when I was younger, and uh, that love has continued to this day. If you give me the option to have a giant mech, I'm probably going to take it, and I did. Better still, her mech is called Iron Bear, which seems like it's very much on brand over here at Delve. The bus pulls up, Marcus is there, and did he always have a ponytail? I don't remember a ponytail. And I really prefer I didn't remember a ponytail, to be honest with you. I then got contacted by Lilith in FMV form, which is just very odd. It is a callback, of course to Angel in the previous Borderlands games, but I've never seen Lilith that way, so that was just strange. I did not expect that. As Marcus rolled away, another character rolled up, and it was none other than Claptrap, who now somehow sounds even more annoying than he did in previous games. I didn't think that was possible, but here we are. He handed me an original Game Boy, and it did not have a cartridge loaded into the top. This was disappointing, I was hoping to play Pokemon Red and Blue. Realizing that I was having a little bit of trouble understanding what he was saying over the background noise, I went and did something very standard for me when I start new games, and turn the music volume and the sound effect volume down, leaving the dialogue at 100. I usually have to do this because voice acting has a tendency to get drowned out very easily, over all the other stuff that's going on, and I don't understand why so many games don't understand that. After doing a quick check to see if I could actually see my feet, also prerequisite when starting a new game, yep, they're there. Claptrap took me to the new U- a uh, quick change station, that's what it's called now, and I found out that you can actually change your primary, secondary, and tertiary color scheme for your character which I later realized was useless because you could do custom skins as well, but hey, this was 10 minutes of my life well spent, right? After realizing that the user acknowledgement was absolutely fake, it was time to start our actual mission, which again, had to be led by Claptrap. Claptrap then attempted the least stealthy stealth mission I have ever seen. And somehow, that makes sense for Borderlands, this isn't exactly a stealth action game. But, new fun thing, I can slide, and I did, repeatedly, because that's just too much fun not to do. He caused a very stealthy explosion, which led me to a chest. The very first one I had encountered in the game, which of course means I got my first gun. I got to try out the new mechanic of having multiple fire modes. So we can have zip rockets, as well as basic pistol shots. 
A neat little thing that adds to some of the dynamics of each gun. An angry metal eye came out and scolded us. But don't worry because Clap Trap is here. So nothing can go wrong, right? It did. Finally, I could engage in my first firefight. The propaganda center was full of very shootable bandits, and who am I to argue with that? I almost electrocuted myself to death in the process, making me the most deadly thing to myself in the game. I also got a sweet second gun, which was a revolver with a very large, probably overcompensating for something, scope on the top. The thing it was obviously compensating for was the fact that it was not a sniper rifle. I went into fight for your life mode for the first time, and then made them regret having put me in fight for your life mode. The game then interrupted my shooty looty fun to give me a tutorial of things that I am very familiar with from previous games, but whatever, it's fine. Maybe I wasn't familiar with previous games. Maybe this is the first Borderlands that I've played. Maybe I'm a heretic. Maybe I belong at this propaganda center. You know what? Probably better if I don't think too much about it. I had picked up a flintlock pistol that apparently Jack Sparrow wasn't using anymore, and I really didn't know if it would be particularly effective. But it was around the same time that I ran across a new cool mechanic in the game, vaulting. Being able to actually jump up large crates proved to be a really useful new thing to do, and I wanted to do it all the time. This was my new jam, and it makes getting around the world way easier. Of course, I also knew that that meant that ledges would just be incredibly high by comparison, but you know what? That's fine. At least I get the cool animation of actually being able to use my hands to climb things. I needed that in my life. Also, my life is very hollow. Oh, and that chest I found had a shield. Actually, it had, like, three shields. I just picked the one with the highest capacity. Armed with the flintlock that I still had not technically tried out, I went to meet my I'm first boss. My this was Shiv, who brought a knife to a gunfight, according to his bio. I have to say, I was not really loving this gun, but it did a sizable amount of damage, and this was the first boss fight. So, go with what works, right? If you only have three guns as options, take the one that's working for you at the moment. Down he went, and before you know it, I was level two. Which meant that I got to unlock my action skills. While I was happy that I got my action skill this early in the game, that wasn't always the case in previous Borderlands, I was a little disappointed that I didn't actually have any skill points I could use at level 2. But that's okay, because I had plenty of choices to make right up at the front, mostly equipping action skills to the different guns. You have two different equip slots on Iron Bear, and I chose the minigun, because I like to fire fast, and a grenade launcher, because I like to fire with explosions. And that will do it for level 1. What will happen with level 2? Well, hint, there's gonna be a lot of shooting. We'll see you then.